If YouTube labeled certain uh, videos as the product of what it labels as uh, responsible news providers, that would be that would be Google's own content, right? Yes. Yes. And, and can, yes. Yeah. Can I say one thing? Just because yeah. I forgot to mention sure. thumbnails. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thumbnails aren't mentioned in the complaint, so I was literally trying to figure out what he was talking about when I was up there because it's just not something in the complaint. But that is a screenshot of the information being provided by another. It's the embedded third-party speech. Okay. Sorry. Keep All going. right. So if but then if I do a search for today's news uh, in YouTube. Um, in fact, I did that yesterday, and all the top hits were very well-known uh, news sources. Those are not recommendations. That's not YouTube speech. The fact that YouTube put those at the top, so those are the ones I'm most likely to look at. That's not YouTube speech. Right, but I mean, all search engines work the same way. If you type in whatever you type in, there is a algorithm that's deciding what content to display. It has to be displayed somehow. And what I think is going on on YouTube, or it's certainly going on on Google Search, is they're not going to. They're looking at well, what did other users look? How popular was it? Um, that kind of thing, you know, is it is that news source, you know, from Russia? Probably not going to get on the top list. So yeah, they're having to make choices because there could be over a billion hits from yours. In there are a, a billion hours of videos watched each day on YouTube, and 500 hours uploaded every minute. So it's a lot of content on YouTube. So some of it's based on channels, and some of it's based on searches, but they have to organize it somehow. But that is what's going on, I think, on your top searches. Is there and most search engines too, and you can look at the Microsoft brief, they're basing it on what time spent on those news sites, how many users are looking at them, how relevant it is. If, it's, if, you're, if you're typing in the Turkey earthquake, they might be elevating some stuff that's featuring that because it you know, seems more relevant. If there's a recent election, they might feature that. So all these kinds of decisions are being made by websites every day. Would, would, the, uh, would Google collapse and the internet be destroyed if YouTube and therefore Google were potentially liable for posting and refusing to take down videos that it knows are defamatory and false? Well, I don't think Google would. I think probably every other website might be because they're not as big as Google. But here's what happens. I mean, you do have that situation in Europe, but there, there's not class actions. There's not plaintiff's lawyers. There's just not the tort system. So what you would have is a deluge of people saying, you know, my that restaurant review was, you know, you said my restaurant review, I didn't like it. I think Yelp does an amazing job on this about how much they got hit and had to spend, you know, almost crushing litigation because they were being accused of being, you know, biased on reviewers and everyone, no matter what, they, they couldn't win for losing or lose for winning, whatever the phrase is, because whoever they, whoever got reviewed, somebody was upset. And so I think those websites, they never would have happened and they probably would collapse. 